Hi, my name is Dr. Wajdi Daba, coming to you from the comforts of my own living room, uh, taking a break in between patients right now, um, using that I'm seeing using telehealth services to kind of quickly give you guys a quick rundown on how to effectively um, and immediately implement telehealth services into your own practices should the need arise for you guys. So right now, I would say about 95% of Americans are in a shelter in place order due to the COVID-19 emergency. Um, and so uh, telehealth services is allowing us as providers to basically remotely s service our patients and uh, provide care. So what is telehealth services exactly? So telehealth services is a pretty um, expanded definition is that it's basically using any um, technology to uh, provide care to patients such as uh, video conferencing like Zoom, uh, Skype, FaceTime, and even just regular telephone or email uh, to, uh, communications. So with telehealth services right now, um, all insurance carriers are actually mandated by the Illinois Department of Healthcare to provide such coverage, meaning as a provider, you don't have to call um, the specific insurance carriers to get uh, special permissions or prior authorizations to be able to uh, implement this, um, this care right away. Uh, one important note is that the in-network in and out-of-network distinctions still apply and most insurance carriers are, will only cover in-network uh, providers for their patients. Where can you provide telehealth services? So um, as long as you're, basically it's not regulated as to where the provider or the patient has to be, but it is encouraged that um, you make sure uh, with your patients that they're in a secure private area where they feel comfortable sharing information from you and you as well um, in a place where, where their information that they share is private and HIPAA compliant, um, meaning that you, you know, you're know you in a private office or, or somewhere um, that with not with less distractions that you can provide good care with to the patient. So it's also important to note that um, telehealth services does not imply a lower threshold of, of care to patients, meaning you still have to provide the same exact standard of care that you would in an in office visit. Um, and now if you're not comfortable with video technology or, um, or telephone technology or anything like that, then it might not be something that you want to utilize in your own practice or maybe want to delegate that to somebody in your practice that, that is comfortable using those technologies. So a couple of distinctions with telehealth services that are important to note. Um, when you document, it is extremely important that you document um, the start and end times of not only the patient visit, but the video technology that you're using. So for example, if you're using FaceTime, uh, jotting down the start time, uh, the appointment lasted for approximately how many minutes and then the end time of the uh, FaceTime call. Um, also important to note, um, with controlled substances, uh, it is important that you know that you have to use actually two-way audio-visual technology um, to be able to provide uh, electronic controlled substance prescriptions and using just telephone services or anything like that is not um, acceptable right now. Um, contact the insurance care providers um, to get the specific billing codes that they use because that can vary from insurance carrier to insurance carrier. Uh, it's also important to note that uh, patients are not responsible for any out-of-pocket right now um, as long as it's not deductible, so meaning that they don't have to pay a copay uh, for any services rendered via telehealth services. Other things that we want to be aware of um, is that um, you need to get verbal consent from the patient to be able to do telehealth services. Um, so, um, and this again goes back to just making sure that, you know, they're comfortable and, and feel comfortable sharing information depending on, on where they're providing that information from. Um, things are constantly changing right now with telehealth services. So uh, it's important just to kind of keep an eye and ear out um, for any different rules or regulation changes. You may want to contact your own malpractice carrier just to um, see what else you could be doing to provide um, the best treatment uh, effectively and safely for the patients. So um, keep, keep your eye out. If you see any other changes, uh, keep track of those. Um, if I hear of any updates, I'll, I'll jump back on. Happy to share those with you guys. Uh, so everybody, please stay safe and healthy out there. Thank you to all the frontline workers as well. Um, and we'll hopefully get through this all together.